All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Tommy Flanagan. I'm the editor of Faultline from Rethink Technology Research. And today, you might notice we've got a, a bit of a change of scenery because I was getting quite bored, frankly, of the, uh, the blank canvas background that uh, we've got used to. And to be honest, equally bored of the, um, the virtual backgrounds too. So we've got some soothing music in the background today. And you might even see some real life people um, walking past in the background, which would be a tree. Um, so we're here at Rethink HQ in Bristol in the upper echelons of a former railhouse built in 1852, where Isambard Kingdom Brunel, arguably Britain's most famous engineer, laid the blueprints for his many masterpieces. Let me show you the uh, reading slash drinking area over there. I'm on the meeting slash drinking area in the middle. Over there, we have another reading slash drinking area. Um, so with that slightly different introduction and different background, I thought I'd frame this week's video more as an introduction to Faultline rather than a targeted tirade as we've um, been doing in previous weeks. Um, because it occurred to me when I walk in to the office this morning, nice and early, is that I've done quite a few rants in a different number of different uh, markets and technologies and events too, have been a big focus, but some viewers might still not be fully aware of what Faultline actually is and what Faultline actually does, apart from crack open cans of lager. I mean, the marketing strapline is that Faultline is a weekly B2B news and analysis publication that provides a framework of technical understanding for surviving shifted, shifting industry trends in media, entertainment, broadband, advertising. And the company's been doing that successfully for over 20 years. And the name Faultline was coined to represent how the seemingly small movements in tectonic plates, the technologies, can send out seismic waves of disruption across markets. But stepping back a bit into the kind of real world, we're, we're not engineers, we're not coders, we're not master algorithm trainers or marketing evangelists, anything like that. Granted, neither are most journalists, but what most journalists are missing, particularly those in the trade publication space that we operate, is that heavy dose of opinion with your news, with a stroke of analysis and even a little sprinkling of uh, occasional humour. Sure as hell isn't enough of that in this industry. I mean, I would describe us as being uniquely cynical, but not cynical for the sake of being cynical, cautiously so, and in an informed way, most of the time, anyway. We don't underestimate the importance of context and background in our writing without boring you to death with history lessons. That's something I'm very conscious of in the editorial process. Um, and yeah, sure, there are plenty of free resources out there regurgitating press releases left, right in Chelsea, which is perfect for reporting news. They serve their purpose, and we don't compete with those anyway because we're not an ad-supported outlet. But even so, why, would, why should we have to take everything as gospel all of the time just because uh, a C-level executive earning a six, seven, eight-figure salary said so? There's so much bias and arrogance in the technology world people insist that this way is the right way and there's no other way of doing it because my company is perfect in every way and that's kind of where we come in we cut through the noise i usually <laughs> use another word instead of noise but i'll try and keep it uh, clean for the sake of this video and we tell you what things actually mean from a totally unbiased viewpoint an almost omniscient viewpoint without trying to compare us to God or anything but we are the ones constantly speaking to people in every little corner right through the video delivery chain from camera to screen and the countless interconnecting parts that make the TV and connectivity landscapes tick and thrive and we're the ones on the front line asking the difficult questions even the stupid questions that people are too afraid to ask but need asking we're there scrutinizing the details that others miss but at the same time we're not getting bogged down and forgetting about the bigger picture. And ultimately, we wrap all of that up into a lovely little cherry-picked package of articles totaling about twelve to 13,000 very original words sent out to our uh, loving subscribers every Thursday, like clockwork. Um, and as a, a little taster, I'll walk you through what we've got this week. There's no better way of... Um, uh, of giving you an example of what we do than, than telling you what I've been doing the last few days. I'm recording this on a Wednesday afternoon, by the way. Um, so there's a couple more thousand words to go before tomorrow's finish line. So I've started off the week 
writing about a a bit of low latency vendor M and A action with Dolby acquiring a company called Millicast. A lot of you have probably seen the press release, but within maybe five minutes of reading that press release, I instantly spotted something that was quite right. So I was straight in touch with Dolby to clarify a critical point that I'm almost certain no one else has spotted. I hadn't, I hadn't read um, about, about this point anywhere. So this is a minor detail that changes the entire premise of the story. And to me, that was obvious. Others, not so much. And uh, I mean, I'm blowing my own trumpet, but that's what I'm here for. But I think that's a really good example of what we're about, spotting those details that others don't. Um, elsewhere this week, we could not do something on the Beijing Winter Olympics, um, so we've got a piece lined up that tries to strike a balance between viewing figures being a total disaster and the kind of silver lining of that, which is some of the innovations happening around 8K and virtual reality um, too. And then we move into Wi-Fi. We've got some extensive Wi-Fi coverage this week, thanks to the Fierce Wi-Fi Summit. Um, we've hand-picked a few of the best bits, it saves re readers a lot of time, a lot of pain, sifting through some of the waffle from the likes of um, FCC Commissioner Jeffrey Starks, um, including a long and uncharacteristically flattering piece on Plume, the cloud Wi-Fi management company we've had multiple run-ins with in the past, which regular readers will know all about. But despite this animosity that comes with the territory in, in this game, we still have the most comprehensive coverage of Plume you'll, you'll find anyway. Again, I think that speaks volumes about what we're about here at Foldline. And, and we've also got quite a few interviews this week. We're, we've got a, a non-profit streaming sustainability project, a couple of ad tech vendors and production workflow provider. We've got an analysis of video price hikes, a look at the next evolution of distributed access architectures and cable networks, a crystal ball exploring what's next in Disney streaming es escapades. And of course, coverage of the collapse of what was said to be the biggest silicon deal in history between NVIDIA and ARM. And it's only Wednesday afternoon. I think that's pretty damn good value. I'm knackered just thinking about it. Now, I should also note that because Faultline is on the front line, talking to real people and churning out trends like this well-oiled machine, it's become this highly complementary resource that feeds our sister service Rethink TV, which does the forecasting and the reports, and the heavy lifting, and if graphs and numbers are, are more of your thing. Um, and uh, another thing, while I'm here, I wanted to share a highlight of the week, uh, which is that I booked flights to Boston for the Streaming Media East event on 24th and 25th of May, which is preceded by the um, Content Delivery Summit on the 23rd of May. It's like just four weeks, maybe five weeks or so after um, NAB in Las Vegas, so to celebrate our imminent return to IRL events, we've had some new business cards printed. Behold, I know some people are going to laugh and scoff at that, but for a small company like ours fighting for attention, these old school physical props um, serve a purpose and I can't wait to start throwing them around so yeah get collecting all right that about wraps up this little general introduction to fault line if you want any more information you can find a link to the website in our description um, and you know when I started this job about seven and a half years ago I never thought I'd be putting out a YouTube video saying hey guys please like and subscribe but here we are times change people change technologies change <laughs> change as our forte and um, you know in hindsight I wish I'd put on a nice shirt or something instead of this old football training top but um, oh well have a great week everyone cheers